Hi, how are you guys doing? It's getting a bit cold here, so I had to put my jacket on. It's a bit warm. Okay, you know, we're going to continue our study on vector cutters. Now, the first section dealt with the derivative of the vector function in terms of one variable, okay? And then now, we're going to kind of really relate that to the real world situation by introducing four new terms. Now, if all of you study kinematics in high school, which I'm sure many of you did, or many of you are doing now, you're going to be familiar with two of the terms. That would be velocity and acceleration. You will know what velocity is, you know what acceleration is. Those are the two first terms that we're going to study. And we're just going to simply relate those terms, same principle, so to speak, but in terms of a vector three-dimensional space concept. And after that, we're going to introduce another two new terms, which when first looking at it, or first looking at my lesson, you may not fully understand what terms are. The names of the terms are curvature and torsion. Now, just like how somebody would take a while to understand velocity and acceleration, somebody may also take a while to understand curvature and torsion. But after a few lessons, you should already get the hang of it. Hopefully, if my teaching provides that, which I hope it does. So we're going to move swiftly along to talk about the first two terms first in terms of three-dimensional vector space. So not vector space, three-dimensional vectors. That will be velocity and acceleration. Okay, we're going to need to define the curve parametrically as I showed you in the previous section. And after that, we can get the position vector. The position vector would be f in terms of t, the individual components. All of you should be familiar with that already. Okay? And for the purpose of this discussion, let's just assume that each of the components are twice differentiable, meaning to say that something like x differentiate twice with respect to t exists. Okay, that is fine. Okay, and we're also going to assume, or we're going to know the arc length. We're going to use that later. The arc length from a point t naught to a point t, which I saw shown in the previous section, that will be integrate from t naught to t, the modulus of the vector function differentiating it once. Okay, I'm still working on writing that, that symbol. Okay, so bear with me. I think I hope it looks a bit better now. Okay, we respect on it. Okay, and we also talked about that we had to change the variable because later we are putting t inside. So this is just for formality's sake, but if you don't really understand the change of variable, it doesn't really matter. You just have to differentiate that, differentiate the position vector, take the magnitude, and then integrate that. Okay? So that is what we have. So now, after that, we go that to differentiate this is simply differentiating each of the individual components. We showed that from first principles in the previous chapter, which you can, previous section, which you can go back and refer to. So now, we got this, okay? Bear in mind that this gives us the tangent vector and this is the position vector. So, one may look about it as thinking that the tangent vector, there's a good chance that the tangent vector would be equal to the velocity vector. Well, that is simply the case. If we take that as true for now. Meaning to say, a point on the curve has a certain velocity and that velocity is given by the first derivative of the position vector. A quick illustration, if you may, would be like that. A curve is here, the point is over here, okay? So this would be the position vector, and then this would be the first derivative of the position vector here, which we also now think about it as the velocity vector. Okay, the velocity vector over here. Now, velocity, remember, when you get a position vector, you differentiate it, you still get a vector. The ij components still say the same. So this is a vector over here, and right now, let's just take it to be as the velocity vector, as intuition kind of shows us that it is. So I would like to always say that the velocity vector has a magnitude and has a direction. And we now want to find the magnitude of the velocity vector, which would give us, parallel to the terms we use, the speed of the point which we like to denote as vt. So, the magnet vt, the speed of the particle, is simply the magnitude of the velocity vector written as this, which you would now know as the square root of each of the individual components. Hey, what am I doing? Sorry, yeah. The individual components like that.
Fair enough? This will give us the speed of the particle at that point. This will give us the, the direction, the vector. The speed is also inside. That's why I like to use the term that the speed is hidden inside the velocity vector. Hidden in the sense that we can extract that information by taking the magnitude. So this is what we think of by intuition, that the velocity vector is equal to the first derivative of the position vector as illustrated over here. However, there's another end, and then also that the speed of the vector is simply the magnitude of the velocity vector. However, there's another way to confirm that fact, and that is to take it from this equation over here, which gives us the arc length from t naught to t, correct? Okay, what we know about two variable kinematics, that the average speed okay, is given by the distance traveled divided by the time. Now, if you introduce the concept of continuity, you will differentiate the displacement with respect to time to get the speed. Is that correct? So, if we would think about it as this way, we define again S from T0 to T over here. So, S would be equal to this over here, correct? Okay, it will be equal to this over here. So if we want to find the average speed, which we defined earlier as this one over here, the speed, okay, we're gonna take V T, okay, and we're gonna differentiate the displacement with respect to T. Okay, now but looking at this, we dif differentiate this function, we put T inside, and then we sorry, we get we get this function, we put T inside, we integrate it, this function first, we put T inside, that will give us something. But since differentiating and integrating are two reversal procedures, that would simply give us the function over here with t inside. That means that would be equal to this one over here. Which is equal to the velocity vector as illustrated over here. Okay? Okay, see? V velocity vector equals the first derivative of the position vector, likewise over here. And this is the average speed which tallies up with the one over here. So, it seems to me that our intuition proves correct that the velocity vector is the first derivative of the position vector by looking at this and by the, another way of taking the average, differentiating the arc length. Okay, we're just going to go through a quick example to see what I mean. Now, let's just be given a curve, which is function t equals to sine ti plus 2, to, 2 e to the power minus tk plus t squared k. So, this is j over here. Okay? So, if simply want to find the velocity, we would differentiate this one once, the position vector once, which will give us cosine t i minus 2 e to the power minus t j plus 2 t k. And then, we will introduce the final concept, which is acceleration, which you probably must have guessed it, is simply differentiating the velocity vector. Acceleration is equal to differentiating the velocity vector once in terms of t, which is equal to minus sine ti plus 2e minus tj plus 2k. And there we go. I am sure that we can prove, or we can at least show this one. By intuition, we know that the acceleration is the first derivative of the velocity vector, and you will also get a vector, if I may confirm that, and also by using that concept over here, there, which I'm not going to show, but you can try it out yourself. So, there we go. That's what this section is all about. Defining the velocity vector, and that would give us, that, that is the same as the first derivative of the position vector, and the speed would be the magnitude of the velocity vector, as we have confirmed it using the other method, differentiating the arc length in terms of s. And then the acceleration is simply the first derivative of the position vector. Get familiar with these concepts, because the next one, we're going to deal with curvature.